Wow, what did I just watch? Tim Zhu gets violently stopped by Bakram Murtazaylev, who retains his title, the IBF title, at 154 pounds. I will give the boxing ego, the ego thoughts and breakdown recap and give you guys my official thoughts. Now, spoiler alert, this will contain spoilers and to be honest, there's not much to break down. But in case you didn't watch the fight or want my thoughts, it was pretty one-sided. The first round was obviously the most competitive round. And you had Tim Zhu, who was trying to go blow for blow with Murder Zylev. And if you guys follow me on social media, on Twitter, I was tweeting that there was an inherent danger. This is an undefeated fighter they had very similar records where they had 20 plus fights and he has a good knockout percentage and got a knockout in his last fight it's just not advisable to go head up we know and this is not to stereotype but in general we know certain fighters from certain regions are known for certain things like fighters from cuba a lot of cuban fighters know how to box good schooling have some educated feet things like that and when we go to russians when i think of russian boxers i think of very good technique but also very strong fighters like you look at kovalev you look at last week we had arthur better and bevel right who are of russian heritage and better be particularly he's very strong same thing with murders i live so I knew early on that this game plan that Tim Zhu may have been able to get away with in past fights wouldn't be good, especially early. You have to imagine early on in the fight, both fighters are at 100%. Like if this was a video game and it says round one, start, you know, fight, you're at 100% health bar. So you would imagine you know, unless the fighter's carrying injuries, which that's a whole different subject matter. But in general, you would imagine that a person who is in round one is at their absolute freshest. So if anything, you got to kind of tenderize that. It's like a tough steak. You got to tenderize the meat. Pause. And Tim didn't really do that. And then in the second round, he got clipped and he got dropped for his troubles, getting too greedy. And then it was really downhill from that. And I, I liked Tim Zoo a lot. You know, there's no shame in me saying that. But this was this was bad game plan, bad strategy. I'm not here to make excuses. This is just my opinion. I do think there was a lot of pressure on Tim Zoo to perform. His dad hadn't went to any of his fights in like 20 years or whatever they said on the telecast. But his dad was at the fight to witness him. So I'm pretty sure his dad doesn't live in America. I don't know, but I don't think he lives in America. And, you know, he came all the way out to watch his son. So you want to you want to impress in front of your your people, your dad. And I think that got Tim Zhu in trouble. He knows he's a warrior. His dad was in attendance. So when he got dropped, he tried to fight fire with fire. And it was a gutsy move, you know, and, and there's a chance if a person's loses their fundamentals and gets over aggressive like anthony joshua with daniel the ball maybe you can clip him but he was he was just fighting such a dangerous fight and then in the round two he got dropped additional two times and when i'm talking about getting dropped some of these shots look like they would a lesser fighter with the lesser chin they would have they would have like blacked out they would have been knocked out like that because he was getting hit and Murder Zylov has a great left hook, great hooks in general, and you could tell he has heavy hands because Tim Zhu was being thrown to the ground, not literally, but it looked like that. It is like a it is like a lot of whiplash and stuff as he goes to the canvas. Tim Zhu bravely got himself back up, picked himself up after every time, but again, it just kept getting worse. It was it was really almost like a snowball effect where that's boxing for you if you really think about it when you've dug yourself into a hole it takes a very special fighter 
and an experienced fighter and a clear-headed fighter to overcome that like floyd mayweather versus shane mosley badly rocked twice in round two and he could have just got knocked out in the following rounds but it made floyd more aware and gave him an acute sense of his sharpness and what to do and then floyd went on to win every other round which is extremely hard to do i would say unfortunately most people aren't floyd mayweather they don't have his chin they don't have his training and discipline and willpower is he's just floyd as floyd you know has retired basically he's just doing the exhibitions i think the world will have more and more appreciation for floyd and how he's the gold standard because he knows how to operate in these moments tim zoo i think with the pressure of his dad being there and all these things i think he just got greedy and he was really trying to like push for a knockout but he wasn't setting it up he wasn't fainting he was squared up he wasn't using a, a bunch of head movement and again you're in there with the russian banger who's a champion and undefeated we know it's going to be harder to take any undefeated fighters oh and then he you got to understand these fighters are sharks they smell blood in the water and you're only going to gain in confidence when you've been having things go your way and you know you have the momentum and that's what happened and, and credit to Bakram Bakram murders I live he did his thing and congratulations to him his game plan just seemed to work and he didn't get greedy he found the right shots at the right moment and the right combinations and he just didn't let Tim Zhu off the hook and the referee even had to warn him hey you know another knockdown like that I'm probably gonna have to call it right and same thing in round three it was pretty much the same thing tim zoo trying showing heart trying to land a bomb to disrupt or change the tempo but it's not like i keep saying it's not really advisable to just fight fire with fire when a guy is like rocking you and here's the thing tim zoo is very tough but he did get dropped by terrell goucher who has like sneaky power this murder xylev dude has real deal power you know he's a tough russian fighter and you're not just gonna walk through all the shots and here's the thing that fighters need to smarten up with and pay attention to in these troubled moments when they're hurt is power is generated from your legs most people when they're getting dropped and having to one pick yourself off the ground that takes a lot of energy because you have to do it within 10 seconds also when you get rattled you get the noodle legs so you're trying to haul off and land this major bomb and you don't really have your foundation under you just think of a house if you build a house with no foundation under it the house is going to collapse you need a strong foundation so if your legs have went away because you got badly hurt then that should be a time where you should be worried about survival tactics L maybe lose the round but lose it a bit more competitively and quietly as opposed to hey i have no legs that is required to generate power and i'm gonna try to slug it out with somebody usually that's not gonna fare well with you but again fighters they get in their head they're embarrassed from the knockdown they're disappointed and then they just don't make the right choices it's like when somebody's intoxicated and inebriated people go out and make a fool of themselves and get a dui or you know getting a street fight or whatever happens because you're just too you're too drunk and i think tim his judgment went away from the embarrassment and being hurt and stuff like that and that's where experience would have helped him to find a way to stay safe and then maybe try to work yourself back into the fight let your legs come back to you you know things like that but he just went out in a, a blaze of glory trying to shoot it out with this heavy-handed russian so the fight card itself 10 out of 10 all of the fights on amazon prime through pbc bangers and i'm talking about every single one of them a lot of people i seen a lot of people were enjoying it but there were a couple of usual suspects naysayers and people some people were hating on pbc saying oh you know look at the venue and this i expected more and stuff like that people talk about everything but the fights the fights leave it to me to tell you what's going on the fights were all bangers you guys can be 
impressed with Turkey and some of these other promoters spending unnecessary money for ring walks and celebrities to be in the crowd and Missy Elliott, Sierra performances. I don't care about none of that. If I want to go see a Busta Rhymes or Eminem concert, I'll just look up to see when they're going to be close to my city, right? I care about boxing. This is a boxing channel. So PBC, despite, you know, the upset, all the fights were a banger. All the fight, every, I'm talking about every fight that they showed was a banger. The production was very well paced. The only, the only downside is they had a couple audio issues. Like Jordan Plant was speaking to the main event, IBF and her mic was not really fully on or something. And there was a couple crackling moments with the audio, but the visual qualities, you guys like whatever you like, but me, if you want quality boxing, then check that out. Check Boxing Ego out. There's a lot of low level quality in this game right now. You know, people rather talk about everything but the fights. The fights themselves delivered. Whether you wanted someone to win or not, congrats to Bakram. He did his thing and we'll see what's next for him. I mean, he looks like a dangerous dude and 154 has plenty of people. So we'll see what's next and how it plays out. Tim Zhu, gutsy performance, but you know, he just pushed it a little bit too much and Bakram had his number. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Subscribe for quality boxing.